boys and girls. It's Miss Hunter again, and we're about ready to read our penguin book. But before we do that, I wanted to introduce you to somebody who lives with me who looks a lot like a penguin in some ways. This is Oreo. <laughs> Oreo's not a penguin. Oreo is my cat. Why do you think we called him Oreo? What does he look like to you? <laughs> okay, Oreo, say hi to the boys and girls at Great Hearts. Say hi. All right, here's our book on penguins. I have eight questions for you to consider prior to us getting started. The first question is, where on earth do penguins actually live? What I'd like you to do is say your answers out loud. Where do you think they live? I haven't seen any living here in Arizona. Hmm, wonder where they live. Say your answer out loud, but say it nice and softly. We want to use inside quiet voices because maybe our parents are working. So where do penguins live? The second question is, do you think penguins are actually birds or are they fish? So look at this guy. What do you think he is? Is he a bird or is he a fish? Now the next question is, keep looking at this guy. Do you think penguins fly or swim? Or maybe they do both. What do you think? Okay, tell me what your answer is. The next question is, is what do these cute little guys eat? What do penguins eat? Hmm, looks like they live in the snow. What do they eat? The next question is, is how do they stay warm? What do they do to stay warm? I guess we'll have to wait and see in this non-fictional book, unless you know. The next question is, the sixth question is, is do penguins lay eggs or how do they have their babies? Hmm, guess we'll have to wait and learn about that too. And speaking of babies, the next question is, is what do baby penguins eat? Do they eat the same thing as their mom and dad? Hmm, guess we'll have to wait and see. And the last question is, is do you think these cute little guys Penguins are endangered. Read a nonfiction book about penguins, and it's written and illustrated by Gail Gibbons. But before I read the book, I want to play for you some sounds. This is what penguins sound like. They don't sound a lot like birds, do they? They sound more like trumpets. So, All right, are we ready to read the book? Let's... Oh, there's another sound. All right, let's read this fun book and see what questions we can get answered about penguins. All right, so here we go, Penguins by Gail Gibbons. Here come penguins, straight and tall. They walk with a waddle, yet look stately and dignified. There are 17 different types of penguins. The smallest is a little blue penguin, and it's only about one foot tall. The largest and the biggest is the empire penguin, and it stands about four feet tall. So that's taller than some of you. All penguins have black or bluish gray backs and white bellies. The patterns around their necks and heads are what make them look different. Some have colorful patches, others show off brightly colored crests, but they all have the same basic body shape and characteristics. I can turn the pages here. All penguins are found in the Southern Hemisphere. Now, what does that really mean? Look over here at the Southern Hemisphere. Let me show you this. So here's the Earth. Here's the equator around the middle of the Earth. So all penguins are in the Southern part below the equator. The United States is up here. So we don't have penguins living here. So they're down in the Southern Hemisphere. So that answers that question is where do penguins live? Penguins are birds. So they're not 
They're not uh, fish, they're birds. But they lost their ability to fly millions of years ago. Over time, they began to spend a lot of time hunting for food in frigid waters. Their wings changed into powerful, rigid flippers for swimming. Penguins have sleep, sleek, smooth bodies that glide easily through the water. They're excellent swimmers and divers. Larger ones can swim faster than 25 miles per hour. The empire penguin can dive deeper than any other bird at about 1,500 feet. Groups of penguins may stay at sea for, sea for weeks at a time. They leap in graceful arcs through the water to grab breaths of air. Penguins feed underwater on krill, fish, and other sea creatures. Their natural enemies are fur and leopard seals, sea lions, sharks, and killer whales. So they eat on krill, which is like little tiny shrimp creatures. When penguins want to leave the water, they can leap up as much as six feet onto the rocky shore or iceberg. They climb rocks easily, hopping from one to another. Sometimes penguins speed over the snow and ice by dropping on their bellies, like this one, and sliding. <laughs> they look like they have a lot of fun sliding. A penguin may have many feathers that are small and stiff. They form a warm and waterproof covering. In really cold places, penguins have ex an extra layer of long downy feathers underneath. They also have thick layers of fat to keep them warm. Once a year, many penguins come together to form colonies called rookeries. Everybody say that word, rookeries. That's a pretty funny word. It is time for the penguins to mate and raise their young. At this time, they make loud croaking and trumpeting sounds. Most of the time, penguins are quiet, but not when they're mating. What a noisy place a rookery is with all the harsh penguin calls. There can be hundreds and sometimes thousands of penguins in a rookery. They have no trouble finding their mates. While courting, they chase each other. Sometimes they hold their wings away from their bodies and hold their beaks up high. Usually the same pair mates and raises its young together. It's time to build their nests. Some penguins make their nests in burrows or rocky crevices. Others build nests in open using sticks or grasses. Some arrange small stones in a circle. The two biggest penguins are empire penguin and the king penguin. They don't build nests. Soon after a nest is built, though, it's egg laying time. Most penguins usually lay two eggs. While one parent keeps the eggs warm, incubating them, the other searches for food. Incubation can last up to 30 to 60 days, depending on the type of penguin. Penguins fiercely guard their eggs and their nesting territory. King penguins and emperor penguins lay only one egg. The female quickly passes her egg over to the male and he carries it on the egg on top of his feet. The egg is kept warm by a flap on his belly called a brood pouch. He carefully waddles around short distances, dropping the egg. During incubation time, the female swims out to sea to feed. The male emperor gathers together in the cold, dark polar winter. The temperature can get as low as minus 60 degrees Fahrenheit. They protect themselves by huddling close together, constantly moving from the inside to the outside of the group and back to the inside to stay warm. See the group here? And they go in the inside and then back to the outside. During this time, they don't eat. They fast, living off of stored body fat and can lose up to 45% of their body weight. After about 65 days, the egg hatches. The female returns around this time 
and it is her turn to sh care for the chick. She tucks it under her brood pouch to keep it warm. Then the male emperor is free to swim out to sea to feed. The chick weighs about 11 ounces and is covered with gray soft down. The mother has food in her belly and when the chick is hungry, the mother throws up or regurgitates a meal for it. So that answers the question about what baby penguins eat. Okay. When the father returns, both parents take turns feeding and keeping the chick warm. The chick grows. Once, when it's about eight weeks old, it weighs around four pounds. Now the chick is too big to stay under the parents' brood pouches. The chicks gather into groups called crochets. They huddle together to stay warm. When the sun shines, they scurry about getting stronger and practicing their balance. When a parent returns, it calls with a cry only the chick knows. The chick rushes to its parent, meal time. The chick is fed one huge meal every few days. It takes time for the parents to make each trip out to sea to get food. All penguins are raised in similar ways. When the chicks are three to 10 months old, they begin to lose their gray down and grow adult feathers. They're now called fledglings. Off they go to live on their own. They learn to hunt and survive without the help of their parents. In about four years, they'll return to raise their own young. At one time, the number of penguins was declining. Eggs were harvested and penguins were hunted for their skins. Their fat was boiled down to make oil. Today, penguins are in danger. Sometimes oil spills coat their feathers. Overfishing reduces their food supply. They get tangled up in fishing nets and tourists, they can do harm to colonies of penguins by disturbing them. Now there are laws to help protect them. People work together to help penguins survive in our modern world. Some areas have been named penguin sanctuaries. Penguins can be found in zoos and aquariums. People working there care for the penguins in a clean, safe environment. It is fun to watch penguins play. And that's the only place in the U.S. that we can see penguins is at our zoos and our aquariums. And we can go watch them there. Maybe you've seen penguins in some zoo or aquarium. So that's the end of our book. And I think we answered all of our questions. Bye, boys and girls. I hope you enjoyed learning all about penguins and doing our penguin dance. See you soon.